How's it going everybody? This is Pete the Bush. Welcome to how to drive a manual so you don't do the horsey. You know when a beginner shifts in the first gear they do like a horsey thing kind of like uh, uh, like that. The purpose of this video is to give you the critical pieces of information I think you need in order to master this skill quickly when you do go to practice. Let me show you what I mean. First the shifting knob controls the speed of your car but you can't move the knob anywhere you want. The center over here is neutral and you don't have to depress the clutch to move anywhere within this neutral area. However whenever you move to to first, second, third, fourth, fifth, or reverse, you do have to depress the clutch fully in order to shift to there. And once you shift to that gear, you have to let go of the clutch slowly while adding more gas. This is a delicate process and I'll explain this more in detail later. Normally if you want to go faster, you normally shift from first gear to second gear, third, fourth, and then fifth on the final one. Sometimes you want to go reverse, so you push the clutch down fully, move it into reverse, slowly remove the clutch and add gas and then you would go reverse. You do not have to follow these gears in this order. Normally you're supposed to switch your gear somewhere between 2000 to 4000 RPM depending on your car. Most cars you would switch maybe around 2000 to 3000. In my sports car it likes to be switched around 4000 RPM. Now if you happen to run really fast on the first gear, you can actually switch all the way to the third gear immediately bypassing the second gear. And then if you happen to be going fast on the third gear, you can also switch to the fifth gear. Same thing on the second gear. If you happen to be going fast on the second gear, then you can actually switch directly to fourth. The engine RPM will drop really far down and you can still run that way. Say you're on the freeway and you're on fifth gear and suddenly you need to slow down quite a bit. After you slow down, you want to speed up again. So you need to match the engine speed to the gear that you're at. So then you might switch from fifth to third. You don't have to go from fifth to fourth and then third. In fact, you can go from fifth to second if you want, but it's kind of ill-advised to go from fifth to first because first is best suited for when you're starting the car. If you're even rolling a little bit, it's really bad to put it in the first gear. So in the US, people drive on the right side of the road and the driver is on the left side of the car. So looking at it that way, the rightmost pedal is the gas pedal, the middle is the brake, the leftmost one is the clutch. The clutch is what you need to depress in order to shift these gears. If you don't have the clutch pushed down, you can move the shifter knob left and right, no problem. But you really don't want to shift to any of these gears without depressing the clutch because the gears would grind. This whole apparatus is the car. The thing that keeps your engine disconnected from the wheel is actually the clutch and the gearbox. If you're not depressed on the clutch, it means your engine is connected to the gearbox. If your gearbox is in neutral, the engine is connected to your gearbox, except it's not driving the wheels. So then you're able to sit in traffic and the engine will be idle and yet you would not be going anywhere. Now when you turn on your engine, your engines will require to spin at a minimum rate. If you ever make the engine go below this, something like 700 RPM or so, it's going to kill itself where it's just going to completely stop. And that's the embarrassing thing that you don't want to do whenever you're driving a manual. So let's just go through the first gear here. Your car normally is in neutral. The clutch is not pressed down, so it's connected the gearbox through neutral, but then it's not spinning the wheels. The green light turns on, so then now you have to start the car going forward. You depress the clutch fully, so it engages from this gearbox. Then this gearbox is not turning over here on this side of the gearbox, so you can shift it in the first gear. After you shift it in the first gear, you can let go of the clutch, which connect these two pieces of mechanical things together so that it'll start driving the wheel. Now the wheel is actually not turning because you're still right now. However, the engine is turning at some really low speed. When you slowly release the clutch, it's trying to reconcile these two things together. So when you slowly release the clutch, it's actually putting more and more pressure on here. So then the engine is trying to turn the gearbox without directly connecting to it physically metal to metal. When you do this, the wheel starts to turn and then when it turns fast enough, you can let go of the clutch and then the engine and the wheel will be synced completely together. Now you realize if you're in a certain gear and your clutch is completely let go, that means your engine and your wheel are connected together. Now whatever speed you're going sort of determines whatever engine RPM that you're gonna go because it's completely linked together from one gear to another. So let's say on fifth gear, you're going at 65 miles per hour. Your RPM, maybe it might be around 2000 RPM. Now every single time you're in fifth gear and going at 65 miles per hour, it's always going to be 2000 RPM because they're linked. 
these gear ratios is predetermined. You're not going to be able to change it. What you're changing here is the ability for the engine to directly connect to the wheel or not and how much it connects. Once you release the clutch fully, it's completely connected to the wheel via some very high pressure friction. So it's kind of like mashing two, two things together like this and you're trying to turn one thing versus another except there's a lot of pressure here. So when the engine turns this, it's going to turn the wheel. Now you can go through life, push the gas more than you need to when you change gears, but you're gonna eat up the clutch more than necessary. The proper way to use the clutch is to use the friction as little as possible. So when you release the clutch, you try to move the engine parts so that they don't slide against each other because whenever you have actual friction, that's when things cause heat and burn and wear things out. So what you wanna do is the engine is turning and you wanna go and catch the clutch, right? and then add power to the engine so that it would continually turn and make the car go forward without slipping very much. So when you see someone that's used to driving a manual and you look at their clutch action, they're gonna have it undepressed like this and all of a sudden they're going to push it really hard all the way down. Then you get to shift the gear right here, okay? And then after you switch the gear, you let up on the clutch very quickly to the point where it starts the friction. So it's gonna go whoop like this really quickly. So this takes a little practice to know where that friction point is. When you know where it is, you can lift your left foot up from the clutch and you're gonna go whoop all the way out here. This is where the friction point begins and then you can start to add gas. And as your car rolls forward so that the gearing will be at about the same rate as the engine, then you can fully release it and then there won't be any kind of horsey jerky movement. What happens when you do that horsey jerky movement is most people, yes, they depress the clutch just fine all the way down. They shift in the first gear and yet when they release the clutch, they release it way too fast. So what happens here is all of a sudden the engine gets smashed into the gearbox. All of a sudden they connect. The engine needs to spin at a minimum rate. And so all of a sudden it's going to try to mash in the gearbox, try to turn it really fast. So then that's why you get that forward jerking movement. Once you jerk forward, sometimes it causes this oscillation. That's why it goes, no, oh, and then go forward and back, forward and back. And sometimes when you release the clutch too hard, the engine can't even turn the wheel at all. And so that's why your engine would kill itself and not run when you release the clutch way too fast. Another point I like to bring up is when you're starting in a car on an uphill. If you're starting uphill, that takes more power, right? Therefore, when you're switching in the first gear and switching in, you actually need more gas so that your engine won't stall. A lot of people don't have a lot of experience driving uphill, like in San Francisco going uphill. You actually need quite a bit more gas in order to keep your engine from stalling. Similarly, if you're going downhill and you're starting your car from going downhill, you actually don't need as much gas because your car is already rolling forward down already. So you need a little bit less like over here. Probably for a beginner, the failure point at which you measure yourself is how many times you kill your engine every single day. The less you do it, the better. Um, sometimes you measure, oh, I only did it once this week or oh, I only did it once this month or something like that. The thing to stop yourself from killing your engine when you shift in the first gear, of course, is once you notice that something is wrong, you can depress the clutch back down a little bit. Either that or you need to add more gas. You can do either one as kind of like a safety thing. Sometimes you actually do need more gas and other times, yes, you might be releasing it way too fast. So then you can kind of go up. If you notice that you're going too up and you're starting to do this jerky thing, you can push the clutch back down really quick, but not all the way because once you push it all the way, then you're not engaging the engine. Just kind of correct yourself by just pushing it down a little bit and then you could possibly save yourself from having your engine die on you. Thanks for watching. I hope this video helps you learn how to drive a manual much quicker than if you didn't watch this video. Don't forget to give me a like on this video, comment down below. Let me know if this helps you drive your manual better. If you're interested in supporting this channel, don't forget to check out my Audible link down in the video description below where you can actually get a free audiobook. And if you cancel in time, you actually don't have to pay a thing and you can still keep the audiobook. I also have a Patreon over here and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.